I'm Chris Morris. I am an archivist at the Computer History Museum. I'm here today, October 5th, 2023, interviewing Diana Stefanova for the VMware Founders Collection. Um, this recording will become part of the permanent collection of the Computer History Museum. Diana, thank you so much for taking the time today to do this with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, first, to start, just tell us, uh, for the record, your name and title and location. Diana Stefanova, and I am a Managing Director for VMware in Bulgaria and also Vice President of uh, Global Site Strategy and Regional Communities. Um, so tell us a little bit about your education and career path leading up to VMware. Well, I started uh, my career into the field of finance. And like I always um, like to joke, uh, I chose finance and technology chose me <laughs> because my entire career has been in the technology field. I have been fortunate to have a chance to work in multiple locations throughout the world. Uh, my career started in the Silicon Valley and I worked for several uh, successful startups at the time. Then I relocated to Bulgaria to work for another startup. At that time, I was leading finance and operations for that st startup. This was the startup called Scion that was later acquired by VMware uh, in 2007. And then I was given the opportunity to really expand my role towards leading the R&D operations for VMware in Bulgaria. So what kind of um, work was Scient involved in and why was that company interesting to VMware? This is a great story. And uh, Scient uh, was a very successful startup on uh, the Bulgarian market. And uh, at that time, there was an opportunity for Scient to work with VMware uh, on one of uh, the early disaster recovery product uh, called uh, Site Recovery Manager, SRM. In fact, it was started in Bulgaria in collaboration, of course, with the Palo Alto team. And um, there was a quick like, fit and uh, really match in our cultures and uh, technology mindsets. Really, the DNI was all about technology <laughs> innovation. And uh, this is where the discussions went, discussions went from partnership to can we become a, a, a merged single company? And this is how the, the discussions around acquisitions of science started. The company is one of the first acquisitions of VMware and the first just for talent. So we had to close all of our current customer engagements and really join the VMware team. Um. So tell me a little bit more about that kind of acquisition. You call it an acquisition for talent. So yes. VMware wasn't wanting to take on the customer base and serve that customer base. Yeah, so at that time it was really, uh, VMware was uh, in 2007, just prior to the uh, IPO, uh, a small company, 2,000 people. Uh, Science uh, only had 170 people uh, at, at that time. And by the way, over 100 of them are still with the company today, 16 years later. And that speaks to a big extent about the culture and uh, how passionate people are about VMware and working for VMware. And um, that this type of acquisition is really about really having um, merging goals and cultures. And there was a quick fit uh, the minute uh, the team in Bulgaria started working with VMware, we felt like we are part of uh, uh, one and the same team, one and the same company. So it was a hard decision for us uh, to really decide to join VMware because VMware is very inspirational for its innovation, for the early products that it had around server virtualization. It was really impressive to really join such a smart team. And by the way, we have gone a long way. Uh, this was a, a very interesting journey for every single one as part of VMware. At that time, as I mentioned, the team in Bulgaria was 170 people. 
today we're close to 2000. So uh, it's uh, really, we've managed to develop it as one of the top strategic VMware sites and investments uh, globally, top three. And um, uh, from just working on a single product at that time, SRM, later VC and the entire vSphere, now the team from Bulgaria contributes to the entire portfolio, uh, multi-cloud strategy portfolio of VMware. So it's been an interesting journey and it really proves that together we can do as a global company a lot of great things when it comes to innovation. Mm-hmm. So when when the Scient team joined VMware, uh, maybe you could describe a little bit just for you personally, what the transition was like. So, so transitions always uh, come with uh, a, a high degree of uh, change and uncertainties. But in this case, uh, as I said, there was a good match when it comes to cultures. Technology-wise, I think the teams really uh, fit well. Uh, the change was about really learning how to work with multiple cultures and global teams, uh, different time zones, because the time zone b- between Bulgaria and uh, Palo Alto is uh, uh, the time difference is 10 hours, right? So uh, really shifting our schedules to be available and, and, and there were compromises done on both ends. And those are the type of changes that you have to kind of go through and and compromises you have to make to be able to be successful as a global team. At the end, this comes uh, as an advantage as well because we managed to do follow the same type of strategy when it comes to supporting our customers, developing our products. So at the end, uh, once you learn to be flexible, agile, and uh, be able to uh, work on multiple time zones and uh, with multiple cultures, it really comes uh, as a great benefit and it's a success for the company. Mm-hmm. Um, the science team that became part of VMware's EMEA uh, global organizing, right? So uh, did you work very closely with other VMware teams? I, they were also developing at that same time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so we, uh, the Bulgaria team worked closely with, when it comes to the R&D portfolio, closely with uh, the U.S. Palo Alto team. Uh, it was uh, one, uh, the, the, for sure the biggest, uh, but possibly one of the very few teams in EMEA when it comes to R&D presence. Yeah. Uh, so it was, and, and it's not a coincidence that today it's like top three R&D centers uh, globally for VMware. We went through a lot of acquisitions afterwards uh, and uh, com- uh, we established uh, R&D centers in Israel, in UK uh, and uh, multiple other places. We have R&D teams now in multiple other places. My role also expanded towards uh, supporting those other R&D centers in EMEA as well. And today, even I have a global reach and global scope when it comes to global sites and and building strong global communities and regional communities for VMware. So um, the collaboration when it comes to R&D was mainly with Palo Alto back then. Today, it's global, right? We work with all of our global centers in in, uh, EMEA, but also in India, in uh, China and other places in the world. Uh, but also we expanded uh, uh, the the portfolio, not only focusing on the R&D side, but uh, we started working uh, on the customer side. We have customer facing teams. Of course, they work very closely with our global teams, but especially with uh, Europe uh, and EMEA. Uh, we also have a lot of operations capacity here. So really, uh, this beca- uh, became a hub from uh, multifunction, uh, no hub standpoint of view. So uh, we work with all of the teams globally. It's not just Palo Alto. We're truly a global kind of company and multiple functions working with different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, can I ask you a very pointed question, which is why Bulgaria? It was really one of the acquisitions that was uh, simply done because of the great talent and the match between the different teams. So this is this is why it was... Uh, 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 this decision was made by VMware back then. 
uh, it was an opportunity and um, for a long, like there was a year full of partnership between both companies that led to these discussions. Mm-hmm. Is there, uh, I'm also curious about this concentration of talent in that place. Where do those folks come from? Uh, the team in Bulgaria? You mean? Yeah. Like, are they all Bulgarians? Are there, is the so educational have- system set up that it really is compelling for young people to go into tech? Yeah, so absolutely. So uh, Bulgaria first is uh, part of the European Union. So really, we are able to attract talent from all over uh, Europe, even from US. Uh, and it's uh, and also people can work remotely and still collaborate with the hub from an R&D perspective here in Eastern Europe in Bulgaria. So um, we have 16 nationalities here in Bulgaria. So it's really a multicultural hub, of course. Uh, um, uh, we provide people opportunity to work from different places, but also to relocate. Uh, and uh, it's a truly international global environment here. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about how your role evolved at VMware from it, this acquisition to now. It's been a great journey, I have to admit. And uh, I actually am... Uh, when I go back and think about my journey, uh, I know that uh, this was one of the greatest things in my career, uh, my journey at uh, VMware. I started with uh, leading the team in Bulgaria at that time, 170 people, now much bigger, multifunctional. Uh, my role expanded towards leading the ME R&D. Uh, and uh, today I also have a global role, which is really uh, driving global site strategy a regional communities establishing a leadership model to support our global teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I was looking at your resume a bit, and there was a time you were where you were posted in Germany. Was that a significantly different kind of role, or was that just an evolution of what you had been doing? Uh, yes. So over my career, I've had the opportunity to work with the uh, or from uh, different parts of the world. Uh, As I mentioned, Silicon Valley in the beginning of my career, then I relocated to Bulgaria, uh, focusing on the R&D side. At some point, there was a lot of, we had a lot of emerging products and the business development aspect and bringing together the R&D organization as well as the sales organization was essential. And this is when uh, I relocated to Germany to be able to build that bridge and support uh, uh, the launch uh, and uh, uh, the development of some of our new products that we were launching at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and what were some of those products? It, it, it originally, we started focusing on the Cloud Foundation, VCF. Uh, this was like early days. Uh, then we had some emerging innovation products around uh, IoT that we wanted to check the market, test the market with. So really, these were like our cloud offerings as well as some of our edge offerings. Um, I noticed in my research that there was a very large announcement of investment by VMware in its Bulgaria site, its physical location, you know, uh, its footprint that was in 2018, 2019. So can you talk about that endeavor, uh, the investment that VMware was making in the physical location? Absolutely. So we acquired the new office uh, and um, we rented the new office uh, uh, that could fit uh, something like 2,600 uh, employees, which is significantly more than we are today and we were back in the day. Uh, so really the intent was to grow and develop uh, the, the office in Bulgaria. It's a really state-of-the-art office, by the way, fully sustainable. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's done in a way where it allows for collaboration uh, and working from anywhere. Right. So we can we have a lot of different innovative zones for collaboration as well as uh, 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 working on site. 
Uh, why was this done? It's really, um, it was obvious uh, the strategy uh, was around growing VMware in Bulgaria for its talent. And all of the functions of VMware were uh, growing, not only the R&D side, which is, of course, majority of uh, the investment in Bulgaria, but also uh, customer facing. They were, we actually uh, established a brand new uh, team um, that was uh, to be based close to R&D, but also uh, support the professional services organizations with different types of customization and integration. This was something very innovative and new for VMware, where you have an engineering team sitting right next to R&D that's supporting the customers. And it proved to be uh, very successful with uh, uh, now this organization is global, is distributed uh, in multiple places, uh, originated, well, it originated from Bulgaria. And it has it serves uh, like majority of our top 100, uh, 100 customers. So it's uh, it, it's uh, it's been a strategic decision back in the days. So While at first it started as a match, right? It be, it became obvious that we can grow all aspects of the business here. Mm-hmm. How did COVID impact that strategy? So. <laughs> That's the funny part because really the office was uh, um, uh, opened, uh, the new office was opened uh, in February 2020 and in March 2020 uh, we all went uh, uh, offline and working from home. And uh, of course as a company, VMware as a company was very prepared for that shift because of the technology that our own technology we really shifted overnight uh, for, towards remote working. So this was not a challenge from a technology and, and business process system point of view. What became obvious though is uh, while we were successful and very productive, we did a lot of analysis when it comes to how this, uh, uh, this new way of working is impacting our productivity uh, and uh, collaboration and everything that's essential for our business. And all of the signs were very positive. Uh, one of the interesting parts, though, is uh, once COVID was kind of fading out and we had the opportunity to come back, I think, and this is not just our office in Bulgaria, but throughout the world, we saw not that many people uh, going back to the office. So uh, it was, uh, again, an evolution. uh, And uh, what people, still majority of our people work uh, um, flexibly. They, They at VMware, we have uh, uh, this uh, paradigm of uh, choice and flexibility in terms of uh, um, where people work from. So um, we still don't see um, like majority of the people in the office every day, but uh, they definitely appreciate the opportunity to collaborate live uh, uh, on a regular basis with uh, their colleagues from the office, meet their colleagues uh, formally and informally, and uh, continue to maintain those strong connections and trust. How would you describe the corporate culture in, well, I guess I would ask you about Bulgaria specifically, but then also in the larger VMware global. So the culture in Bulgaria is absolutely identical to the global culture. We've been part of the VMware family for 16 years now. And really, it's like no matter which office you go, not just Bulgaria, but any of the other offices, you feel the vibe, the VMware vibe. And VMware's culture is unique. It's something that has kept us as part of this company for many years now. Uh, and uh, we really, uh, it started kind of with uh, more informal vibes, early days, 2000, 2005, seven, you know, the culture was all about, about innovation and technology, we're technology geeks, and really the innovation piece was key. But in addition to the focus on the innovation and innovation being part of our DNA, uh, the other part of the culture was people and really the people-centric culture that has made us who we are today is, was, has been very essential uh, for our success over the years. Uh, this really evolved towards a more formal um, 
culture and values that we all recognize. Back in 2013, we established our EPIC 2 values. And what EPIC 2 stands for is uh, E for execution. It's really how we work together, how we execute, how we collaborate as a team. Uh, passion is about uh, innovation and challenging the status quo. Integrity is the trust that we build among each, o- each other. Uh, C, the first C is about customers and how we deliver together for our customers. And the last C is about community, our internal community, but also the external community, how we give back to the communities we live in and work in. So uh, this culture, while it sounds very kind of formulated and, 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 um, and uh, formal, it just it was an evolution. It was something we created together over the years and something that uh, keeps us all together today. Um, stepping a bit outside VMware specific, your VMware specific role, um, can you talk to us a little bit about your efforts around uh, supporting women working in tech? That's a, a great cause of mine as well. I really feel like uh, um, we definitely owe it to the community to bring more women uh, to the tech, to the IT world, to STEM, uh, because definitely uh, there's uh, there's this uh, perception that technology and STEM roles are not for women. Unfortunately, still even today, while we've done a lot of eff- we've put a lot of efforts, we've done some progress. I think we still have a long way to go uh, towards attracting more women to STEM roles. And it's important. Why is it important? Because at the end of the day, uh, many of the um, you know offerings, uh, whether it's software, or hardware, or anything in technology, at the end of the day, users are 50 women and men, right? 50% of our population are women. So if you want to serve well uh, both sides of our populations, both uh, uh, women and men, uh, then we we have to bring more women to uh, creating the technologies and towards building uh, technologies that serves both uh, both uh, uh, um, uh, genders. And um, I think uh, women have a lot to give back uh, and, and they can influence the technology in a big way. And uh, I think we can only do that if we bring more women uh, to the table. I, uh, early days at VMware, when we started talking about women in technology, I have to admit, I didn't really understand what the challenge is. Because honestly speaking, I've never had any uh, problems or uh, roadblocks, especially in the early days, uh, when it comes to um, developing my career, being, being successful, being supported. Uh, while I've always been surrounded by more male uh, team uh, mates, uh, it's always been a great partnership and collaborations. Over the years, though, I started realizing that there's a lot of bias and there's a lot of internal breaks that we women have towards developing and growing, whether it's because of the communities that we live in, the perceptions in those com- expectations of those communities towards women or on or anything outside of us. There's a lot of um, hidden undersurface bias, uh, and we call that unconscious bias that we have to deal with. So once I started realizing this, and especially uh, considering that I have two girls, uh, two daughters, I felt that it's my obligation to really be vocal about this and try to attract more women to the STEM world and to the STEM jobs, because I think only this is how we can bring a build a really strong uh, technology for the future and make sure we serve our communities properly. Thank you for that beautiful statement. Um, the other uh, area I've noticed is so much of your time and energy is going into developing and supporting the innovative uh, ecosystem in Bulgaria with new ventures, startups. Can you talk about that? effort. Exactly. So that's another passion of mine. I felt like I've built a 
some great legacy, a lot of uh, great knowledge uh, that I am ready to uh, pass and support uh, young companies so with uh, everything I've learned over the years. That was my realization point. Uh, and this is when I said, okay, it, it's time for me to, to, to support the ecosystem. Um, today, I'm, I'm supporting um, as a venture partner, uh, one of the startups, uh, not one of the venture funds in uh, Bulgaria, but it's really a regional fund, a EMEA fund. And there's a, a lot of uh, great uh, new young companies that uh, are uh, kind of uh, starting from this region and growing to global markets and reaching U.S. markets. And uh, first, the knowledge the technology expertise, also the networks that we've built over the years are uh, something we can really support them with. Um, I wonder if it's difficult for those kinds of uh, startups in Europe to, or in other parts of EMEA to get the attention of Silicon Valley. Is the weight of the tech world still in Silicon Valley? The weight of the tech world is in Silicon Valley. Of course, we have some great hubs here in Europe as well, Israel, UK, Germany. Uh, and um, obviously, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge here and, and expertise here uh, in region. But ultimately, most of the startups uh, end up uh, working with uh, Silicon Valley, US, uh, when it comes to, um, to going to next stage of development. Many of them even establish uh, hubs or headquarters even in US uh, when it comes to reaching those markets. So that's the direction. I mean, we know the story from Israeli or UK startups when you might start from uh, Europe in the region, but you end up, of course, uh, establishing great operations uh, in US uh, for getting additional attention and support. And, and in the past, it uh, used to be, of course, much harder. Today, we, we're really global in terms of how we operate. There's a lot of connections among us. And uh, obviously, the digital world is uh, giving us access to uh, markets, to, to, to people, to, to financing. So today, it's much easier. But again, uh, we need to help those young companies uh, really cross the ocean and, and uh, get to uh, partnerships or capital that can get them uh, help them grow to the next stage. Mm -hmm. um, who, going back to your role at VMware, who are the people at VMware that have really had an impact on your career and your career development? There's so many. Uh, 16 years at VMware, it's been a great journey, as I mentioned, so many of them. But I would mention a few, if you allow me, not just one. Of course. Uh, I would start with uh, Pat Gelsinger as uh, our uh, prior uh, CEO. Uh, Pat was instrumental for development of VMware, but also um, he had a strong impact on me personally. Uh, he's guided us as a leader, he's mentored us. Uh, he is very strong from a, as a people leader standpoint of view, also from a technology standpoint of view, so a lot to learn. He's great when it comes to execution and he's there to challenge you to really go above and beyond. Uh, and he's a very spiritual, religious and good person. So those are all qualities that I've always been impressed with and I've learned from. Uh, another leader is our CEO today, Raghu Raghuram, and he's been uh, with us from day one. He, for many years, as you know, he led the product organization. And as such, he's really guided and uh, supported uh, VMware Bulgaria in each stage uh, of its development. And Raghu personally has challenged me multiple times. I still remember early days, we are probably two, 300 people here in Bulgaria. And he came to me and he said, how fast can you get to 1,000? And it felt really impossible for such a short time. And, you know, we, we always aim for the top talent, the most senior people. Uh, and it felt really hard. But look at us today. We're over 
almost 2,000 people today. So uh, he's known for his uh, ambitious goals and challenging, uh, challenging us to go above and beyond. Another leader that I would like to mention uh, is uh, a woman, Yang Ping Li. And uh, she used to be my peer, then became my manager. But also it's someone that I've learned uh, from quite a bit when it comes to, as a woman leader, really uh, targeting uh, to, to continue developing, to make bigger and better uh, impact. And um, don't stop, right? Uh, state, uh, uh, state your goals, uh, find supporters and keep going. Uh, so she's definitely an example uh, and a model for a successful technology leader as a woman. Thank you so much for sharing those stories of your mentors and supporters. Um, I um, It is a time of transition for VMware. It's part of why we're doing this project, but I just wonder if you can reflect a little bit on the influence that VMware has had in um, specifically the Bulgaria and sort of middle European um, ecosystem for tech. The influence that VMware has had in Europe has been tremendous. I mean, like we have presence pretty much in almost every EU state and EMEA country. Uh, and um, we have presence uh, not only from a go-to-market sales perspective, but as I mentioned, R&D. Uh, while Bulgaria being the biggest, we have very strong centers in Armenia and Israel and UK, London, and so on. Uh, also, when it comes to operations, so we have strong uh, operations here uh, in Ireland. Uh, and a very, very a strong uh, headquarter when it comes to uh, running our business and, uh, and supporting our business. So um, tremendous, a tremendous impact when it comes to, um, you know, being distributed, making impacts, supporting our EMU customers, but also global customers internally, externally. Uh, and um, I think uh, it has made a difference. And VMware has been supporting some of the research that EU is the, doing through our teams here. We've contributed to different type of research that's funded by EU when it comes to 5G, when it comes to cloud or IoT. Uh, there has been a lot of effort in collaboration and partnership with the local ecosystem, for example, uh, local universities in Europe or um yeah, or uh, big players uh, on the European market. So uh, VMware has been essential for uh, developing the technology uh, uh, market here in EMEA. But uh, of course, uh, that's in collaboration with our global teams. Mm -hmm. um, is there a project or an endeavor that you personally are particularly proud of? during your time at VMware? So the biggest uh, highlight for me is uh, how successful we've been able to build and develop uh, VMware in Bulgaria, uh, like top three uh, VMware site globally, uh, and from an R&D perspective, essential for uh, the entire portfolio of VMware, starting from a single product now, working pretty much uh, all of the portfolio uh, portfolio um, products uh, for VMware, that's essential. Also the reach to the customer supporting 80% uh, of our top 100 customers uh, from here globally is essential as well. Uh, when it comes to operations, uh, uh, really supporting the new operations, but a lot of global operations as well. So uh, this, this is uh, essential. Uh, and uh, it, while it's not a project, it's really uh, one of VMware's offices uh, globally. I think it has, uh, it, uh, has significant in, uh, impact and contribution towards VMware, towards the ecosystem uh, uh, in Europe and, um, and towards our customers globally. Uh, if I have to mention a single product, and, and I like 
our entire portfolio. It was mm -hmm. it's very difficult for me to single out one product. Uh, but I'll, I'll basically highlight uh, uh, Site Recovery Manager. Uh, this is the, the, the product that initiated in Bulgaria and led to this tremendous acquisition, acquisition that now uh, we have a very, very strong team contributing and supporting our global portfolio and reaching out to all of our 500,000 customers, which is essential. Um, what do you think is the lasting impact of VMware's technology? So VMware's technology, I think it's well recognized uh, on all angles, like from all aspects, right? Uh, even fortunes, uh, uh, like uh, change the world list, uh, recognize VMware's technology virtualization specifically as really dramatically improving uh, efficiency of IT, IT infrastructure for all of our customers. So, and I underscore dramatically, right? And so uh, it, this is an important aspect uh, of how we, uh, with the innovation at VMware, we change the way businesses, businesses operate uh, and led to, uh, to the cloud technologies uh, today, right? It started with virtualization uh, and we virtualized the entire data center then automated all aspects of uh, uh, data center operations, then took that uh, to the cloud and now focusing on the multi-cloud uh, uh, strategy side of the business. Uh, so VMware's technology is really powerful, but on top of that, it's really what our technology uh, does when it comes to our communities and the impact it has on the planet. There's a lot of reports on the topic. We did some analysis. And through VMware's technologies over the years, our customers have been able to avoid 1.2 billion megatons of carbon emissions. And I think this is huge. Mm -hmm. This is huge and really is what is going to uh, stay behind us, right? And it, this is the legacy we've been able to build. And there's a lot of a lot of great things we can do in the future through that technology as well. Thank you so much. Um, is there anything you want to share that we didn't cover? I really enjoyed our interview. Everything uh, that you asked was very relevant and it's close to my heart. I just uh, would like to see many more uh, years of successful technology that VMware and the teams at VMware can bring uh, regardless of uh, whether we are part of a bigger company, I think that the, the, the innovation that will come from those teams is going to make a difference in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you.